So this is an example of a foot that's in an overpronated position. Um, a good way to determine whether or not you're, in a, you're an overpronator is to find a line down your shin bone. In the very front portion of your shin bone, as you're following the tibia, if you continue that line out down your tibia towards your ankle, and if that line as you drew it out came out towards the inside portion of the foot, it's representing the lower leg in an internally rotated position. The rear foot joints are in what we call a pronated, or in this case an overpronated position. Normal position of the foot working around a neutral subtalar joint position is in, in this position here. And what happens is we've now externally ro rotated the leg. So if we find that line right down the tibia bone and continue that line out really towards the ankle, the line would come out towards the first and the second toe. So what the shoe and an orthotic will do together, if needed, uh, is to actually help decrease that foot pronation and bring the foot to a more neutral position. Uh, the goal, again, with the shoe and the orthotic, by decreasing pronation, we're hopefully decreasing the risk of uh, overall injury. The position of the leg uh, and the foot uh, contacting the ground from, from a behind position. And what we're looking at is the position of the heel bone in relationship to the ground and the heel bone in position to the lower leg. In this case we have a leg that's in a varus attitude. The foot, the heel bone is uh, perpendicular to slightly everted or in a valgus position. Looking at the foot in a pronated position behind, what we're seeing is in fact the inside contour. This is a portion of what we call the mid-tarsal joint that is prominent in its pronated position. And again, with regards to the shoe and the orthotic, what we're doing is rolling up the arch to bring to a more neutral position. So by doing this, we're actually taking the calcaneus or the heel bone into a straighter alignment to the ground or closer to perpendicular. And the mid-tarsal joint uh, is now in a more neutral uh, and locked position. Uh, again, the shoe and the orthotic help to accomplish this. So with a normal phase of uh, walking as well as running mechanics, um, there's a swing phase, which uh, is the leg in the air, and there's a stance phase. And this uh, first picture is representing the stance phase, which is at heel strike. And then we lead to mid stance. And mid stance is predominantly where most of the abnormal foot pronation occurs during the walking and running cycle. During this mid-stance phase of walking, the foot prepares itself from a pronation to more of a supination, but we lead into propulsion, which is where we leave with the heel off of the ground. And it's the mid-stance to propulsion where a lot of pronation-related uh, overuse uh, and training-related injuries occur. This is a front view of what heel strike uh, would look like, leading to mid-stance. And at mid stance, the foot normally will actively resupinate, which is the arch re regenerating itself or reshaping, leading to propulsion. That's a normal walk through a normal running cycle. Someone who pronates excessively tends to contact at heel strike, leading to mid stance pronation and staying pronated as you lift your heel off the ground. It's the shoe and the orthotic that collectively work together, or the shoe alone, uh, that will help control that late mid-stance pronation and put the foot in a more supinated or more of a foot neutral position as the heel lifts off the ground in propulsion.